gosh. So, the light doesn't work anymore, Chris. So you betcha. Good evening. Welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education meeting. Today is Thursday, July 31st, 2014. May I please have the attendance? Mrs. Bealey? Here. Mr. Chiazzo? Here. Mrs. Lang? Mrs. Massengill? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Murray? Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And I would like to just say right now um, that we are looking to adjourn to executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 4056D to discuss the bargaining contract between the Board of Education and the Scarborough Educational Support Professionals, and we will be returning to public session. Do I have? So moved. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Six. So moved. We will return back to public session after we are finished.
and we're returning now from our executive session, which was 4.0, and I will ask the superintendent now if there are any adjustments to the agenda this evening. Um, I believe that the only adjustment is, um, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you uh, make the motion and move to, I think there's a desire to uh, table 8.4 for right now until your next meeting. Okay. But um, maybe we'll just entertain that and table it as, as you, if you wish. Sure. Okay. But that would be the only possible. Yeah, I was thinking we'd just go through the regular motions and table it at the okay, time, but yep. if you want, whatever you want. Okay, well, we can hold off then. That's fine. All right, and then we also have 5.0, the adjustments of those other things. Um, and does everybody have a copy of this? Uh, there's a 5.0. There was an adjustment sent out earlier today, adjustments to the agenda. Everybody have that one? It lists out um, an 8.3 appointment Isn't deleton it? and an 8.3 appointment addition. Gone, right? Correct. 8.35, which is um, the eight corners a school classroom teacher, right. um, that has been uh, taken off the list, okay. and um, there were additional appointments in terms of um, 8.3, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. So those are um, those are amendments to the current agenda. So it had a new addendum today with the new whole appointment sheet. So does everybody have it? Did you get that? No? Yes? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So then that's it. All right. So um, 6.0, the superintendent's report this evening. <coughs> um, yes. Uh, I think the month of July is an interesting month for us. Um, there's a still important business that has to be taken care of, um, even though the school year has ended. In fact, uh, we are uh, under pressure to complete certain reports um, and basically just uh, clean up after a very, very busy school year. Um, it's also a time of year that allows um, some of us to take a little bit of vacation, and that's happened, and I've encouraged our school leaders all to take a little bit of a break. It's been a very busy year. Um, a tremendous amount of time is invested in refilling staff and professional um, vacancies that are created either by retirement or by resignation. That would include our ed techs as well as our professional teachers and faculty. Um, and you, you will be asked to authorize tonight a number of uh, those appointments that will um, really uh, be, begin the employment uh, the probationary employment periods of these uh, teachers that will um, be brought before you um, and ultimately leading to continuing contract status. And as you know, there's a three-year probationary period that, um, that is employed and has been employed for the last year. I've had the pleasure of meeting um, the new staff and I have to say again this year, um, I continue to be impressed with the overall uh, qualifications and particularly the enthusiasm and energy that uh, the new staff um, members, these new team members are, are bringing. So that it's, um, uh, it's with pleasure that I bring these appointments forward. July is also um, a time that we're running summer programs, uh, including our summer reading academy that just wrapped, wrapped up today, um, extended school year services for um, our uh, special needs students and as well some extended ESL services um, in the form of tutoring. As I said, the uh, Reading Academy um, has had a successful run this year um, and has wrapped up uh, while the extended school year services will run another couple of weeks and the ESL tutoring services another week or so. Um, there are also then looking into August a number of specialty training programs uh, that have been scheduled for faculty and for school leaders and they'll be starting um, the week of August 4th. Um, th they are not one after the other but uh, there is a whole schedule of, uh, of events between August 4th and about the middle part of the, of the month. Um, our first day, just as a reminder to the board um, of the new school year, Am I talking about that already? Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. um, the new school year will be August 26th, and all board members are certainly invited uh, to join us. Uh, that's a fairly brief program. It starts at 7.30 um, at, with a, a bit of a continental breakfast, and the program actually starts at 8.15 a.m. And I know that Mrs. Sizemore has um, a, an update in terms of transportation. Yes. Um, the Transportation Department has been working with a, with a state computerized program to determine bus stops and uh, routes. 
So this year we have a new system that will be um, going out to parents and families and children where they will receive a postcard for each child in regards to where their bus stop is, the time, morning and afternoon. Uh, therefore, since we'll be sending these individual cards out, it will not be posted in the newspaper. It will be on our website um, if they need to go and look at that. But um, hopefully next week we'll be mailing out the postcards determining what their bus stop location and time for morning and afternoon. Hmm. I just have one question. Is there a way that instead of having the bus routes listed in the paper then, is there a way that there could be a blurb put in there that says, you yes. know, bus but routes are listed on, on our website. website. Please visit www. K12 That's what we're hoping to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I know everybody looks at the paper. Looks in the paper and then goes back to refer to the paper weeks later after yeah. they haven't quite figured out what they're supposed to be doing. After right. they posted on we the wanted to, um, <laughs> Before we post that in the newspaper, we wanted to send the cards out oh, right. so they knew they got the cards mm -hmm. yeah. and this is what your stop is for morning and afternoon and then we'll post it also. Then we'll post it in the paper. Great. That little blurb. I think that's a good idea. I think that way everybody knows yep. what's going on. Perfect. So we'll see how that works with our with the uh, computer program that has helped us develop the bus stops and routes. <coughs> are a lot of the bus stops changing? Um, some of them are changing a little bit, and that they're very they're listed right there where the location of the bus stop is. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure we're not changing the criteria for bus stop locations or anything. We're just changing how we determine or how that's determined through the software program. Right. Okay. We put in our um, guidelines and procedures, yep. and then that's how it was determined through this program. Based on the volume of kids in certain areas, and that shifts every year. Yep. 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 Okay. So is August 26th the first teacher day or the first day for students? It's the first teacher, teacher day. Okay. And the first student day is? It varies. It varies, it's, it varies. It varies depending it's, on what grade. It's best to just consult the, consult the calendar. The um, calendar um, yeah. For example, three through five doesn't start until after Labor Day. Okay. Because we're starting in the new school um, and we've afforded um, everyone the opportunity to get oriented, uh, ensure that we've got all the emergency procedures down, everything's working, people are settled. Um, and uh, for example, K2 is by appointment um, only, uh, so schedules will be made with parents, and um, so it's really, rather than put it out there and cause confusion, I would say consult the calendar, but we do, we have deliberately um, delayed three through five until the day after Labor Day. Is that by any chance on the postcard? No. Uh, no, because that's no. just the transportation shop. Mm -hmm. I think parents are pretty aware of that. Can I okay. ask one question, too, just because we're talking about um, things getting mailed out to families? I just came from a birthday party with um, 27 middle school girls, <laughs> and they're all very anxious to know who they have for teachers, so I didn't know if we had a target date for when those assignment letters were going to go out. I do not have a date for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, I think we have our hiring pretty much wrapped up, but um, some of these are really just being completed um, this week, so okay. I, I would imagine as quickly thereafter. Anybody else? No, school, I just want to say school board people can't be pushy about that. <laughs> no, I'm just asking because I just was asked I'll at the that. party. I would just, you I would just, I I would just, I would just say... Um, Every day I get asked, can you check exactly. the mailbox? Yeah. Yeah. I would say at this point we, we don't have a, a date. Yeah. If um, Mrs. Hathorn were here, she would tell us better, but I, I don't want to make any sort of commitment. Yeah, I was just wondering All if right. it was a, mm -hmm. it was close and we knew it. <laughs> Perfect. All right, they will. They are guaranteed to I have a teacher. A teacher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you <Even> sure? <laughs> Everyone will have a teacher, at least one. Perfect. Anything else no. on your report? No. no. Okay. So um, the chair report this evening is quite short. Again, it's summer, as Dr. Entwistle pointed out. So um, we're wrapping up the Wentworth project um, through the punch list phase. There are still workers in determining various things. New, you know, other things that need to go in for data and computers and things of that nature. Um, road work is underway on 114, if anyone has seen that. Mm -hmm. So there will be definitely um, a new traffic pattern for parents to get used to in the fall, um, as well as just people driving down 114. So um, 
just pay attention to that. Also, going in and out of the ball fields as well. So, um, building Excuse them. Me. Oh. Would you clarify that that is a town school project? It, it came out in the paper that it was part of the Wentworth project, and it is in it, some ways, it, but it's a town. It was a combined project combined project that Thank we you. worked on with uh, Dan Bacon in the planning department and some other individuals down there, um, and it was in order to improve the safety for pedestrian crossing for the students that go across from the school side over to the other side, the, I, I'll call it the Hannaford Drive or the bank side of 114. Um, so there's a crosswalk. We've also made it so that the cars can't turn in or out from particular directions depending on which way you're heading. Um, and that was a project that's funded by both the Wentworth project as well as the town. From funds saved through the land mitigation piece. Right, and we also mitigated and we saved over, well over $200,000 in the land swap. So this was part of our agreement with the town that we would improve that traffic or pedestrian piece uh, to make it pedestrian more friendly. And uh, I do know, I believe that there was a grant piece as well that wasn't on the school side, but it was on the town, town side, side through, um, I want to say it was called Safe Liberty Passage for Schools. School. Yep. Safe, safe Passages for Schools. And so I don't know to what degree um, they were awarded funds or how much, but that would be something you could check within the planning department there. So um, then we've got the building demolition is complete. Um, the art should be installed in the center area soon, and we're waiting on a certificate of occupancy um, that should be issued as soon as some of the uh, punch list items are completed. So. Now, are you talking about the art that will be installed due to the, to the uh, purchase of the bricks? Yes. yes. And that's how it will be paid art for? art installation. No yeah. additional art that's being hung that's no. coming no. out of the school budget? No. Mm -mm. Okay. No. That was, that was through the bricks uh, sale. So the brick sales, I, you know, I believe the first order has already been placed on the brick sales, and we had agreed that we would continue to sell the bricks, forever. you know, infinitely. Forever. Forever. Yes, forever. Um, so that's um, that. Any questions on that? Yeah. Okay, when are you, when are you going to do the the installate brick installations? When is that going? Is that ongoing or is that uh, going to be you going to That hasn't separate? started yet. Is um, the bricks are. The bricks that are there are not the ones being engraved, and so those, that shipment hasn't come yet. Right. And when it does, they'll start putting those in. Okay. So in the future, when somebody orders a brick after this initial run is done, um, we'll wait to place the order until we have some X number quantity, right. and then order them all at once. And I imagine it would fill one of the little squares Players. set aside for them. So. Gotcha. Okay. And the contractor has agreed to install those at no extra cost. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to know as well. Yeah. And Dud Dudley has been wonderful oh, to work fabulous. with. So from beginning to, you know, through even right now when there are things that are kind of flying all over the place. So he's, he's been great to work with. An outstanding with. contractor. Yeah. Did we have a fair representation on the town of not just families, but businesses as well, or any commercial groups? There are some, there are some businesses, not mm -hmm. a ton. Um, I think once people see them installed, because there really isn't anything like that in town. I mean, some people know about uh, Maine Med has them, um, Ronald McDonald House has them, but there's not anything around here like it. So I think once people see them installed, there's going to be a lot more orders that will come in in the fall when they're... Oh, so there's open. still an opportunity. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Plenty ongoing. Of yeah, yeah, plenty absolutely of ongoing. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. And I can tell you now, Kiwanis bought a large one, mm -hmm. and then Kiwanians are buying bricks... Individual. Individual bricks to go with the with the bigger brick. And you can you can ask mm -hmm. to have it... Right. Placed near. Placed in, in this section, so to speak. Oh. So if you want to buy one for school board, because remember the school board bought well, one. Well, we did, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That you can buy one and put the dates that you were on the school board. You, I put my, I didn't put any dates on mine, but <laughs> <laughs> we need a second brick. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> All right. That's a good thing. Uh, good job. Okay. Anything else? Questions about that? All right, so we're going to move on to our new business this evening. 
We have 8.1. We have the minutes from June 5th, 2014. Move approval is printed. Second. Any comments, corrections, <coughs> deletions? All in favor of a, approval as presented, the minutes of June 5th, 2014. Six plus one. We have the minutes from June 19th, 2014. Move approval. Second. Second. Any corrections, deletions, comments? I will not be voting on this one because I was not at that meeting. So all in favor of approval as presented. Five. Thank you. Um, appointments. We have 8.3, and I will turn that over to Dr. Entwistle. Okay. Um, as I said, uh, it's been a pleasure. I, I've met most of these. I think um, Mrs. Sizemore uh, met a couple of these folks as well. Um, I'll start with 8.3.1, a high school Spanish teacher. This is Brianna mm -hmm. Kelman, nominated to fill the position. It was created by a resignation. Ms. Kelman received her undergraduate degree from St. Anselm uh, College in international relations, and she has a master's degree from Plymouth State University. She's been a Spanish teacher since August 2009 in Newport Middle, high, uh, Middle and High School, and that's in Newport, New Hampshire. The recommendation is to appoint Ms. Kelman as high school Spanish teacher. Move approval. Second. Second. Questions? She also graduated from Scarborough High School. Oh, All that's right. So noted. So noted. She graduated from Scarborough High School. Nice. Oh, good. She was my neighbor growing up. All right. All in favor of approval of Brianna Kelman as presented. Six. So moved. And she was hired on her credentials, not the fact not that, that she was a, a next door neighbor of a school board member. <laughs> and welcome back to Scarborough. <laughs> <laughs> um, 8.3.2 high school math teacher. This is Christine De Rosa, um, nominated to fill the position. It was created by a resignation. Mrs. De Rosa received her degree in mathematics education from the University of Rhode Island, has been teaching math in several schools in New Hampshire and Rhode Island, and has 14 years of experience. The recommendation is to appoint Christine De Rosa as high school math teacher. Move approval. Second. Second. Any questions, comments? All in favor of approval of Christine DeRosa as presented. Six. So moved. Item uh, 8.3.3, a uh, high school science teacher. This is Emily Blazik, is nominated to fill the position. It's been created by a resignation. Ms. Blazik uh, received her <coughs> Bachelor of Arts in Human Ecology from the College of the Atlantic in Bar Harbor. Her master's degree in public health from UNH. Uh, she's been an eighth grade science teacher in Dover Middle School for seven years. The recommendation is to appoint Emily Blazik as high school science teacher. Move approval. Second. Any comments? All in favor of approval as presented of Emily Blazik. Six. Thank you. Item 8.3.4, uh, Wentworth classroom teacher, uh, Kelly Ulet tuki is nominated to fill the position. This is created by resignation. Mrs. Ulet tuki received both her BS and her MS degrees from the University of Southern Maine. She's been an elementary teacher in Biddeford and MSAD 6, and most recently was a grade 5 long-term substitute at the Wentworth School. The our recommendation is to appoint Kelly Ulet tuki as Wentworth classroom teacher. Move approval. Second. Comments? Questions? All in favor of approval of Kelly Ulet tuki as presented. Six. So moved. Item uh, 8.3.6, a high school teacher. This is Valerie Lander, nominated to fill the position created by a resignation. Ms. Lander received her Bachelor of science degree in environmental horticology from the University of New Hampshire. She's currently enrolled in a Master of Science program in school leadership at St. Joseph's College. The administrative recommendation is to appoint Valerie Lander as high school science teacher. Move approval. Second. Any questions, comments? So this was a science teacher. I just want to clarify that because you had said just a high school teacher. I just want to make sure. High school science teacher. All right, perfect. All in favor of approval as presented of Valerie Lander. Six. Thank you. Item 8.3.7, Wentworth School Guidance Counselor. 
Julianne Smith nominated to fill this position created by resignation. Uh, a very delightful Ms. Smith um, received her undergraduate degree from the University of Southern Maine. She's currently enrolled in the master's program in school counseling. Uh, she is, um, the administrative recommendation is to appoint Julianne Smith as Wentworth School Guidance Counselor, and she is very excited about this job. <laughs> Move approval. Second. Oh, Kelly, she is. Mm -hmm. uh, questions, comments? All in favor of approval of Julianne Smith as presented? Six. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, Crosby told me that I was going to love all of the nominees that she was bringing forward to me, and it is true. Uh, she's done a fabulous job, as has Mr. Creech, on all of the positions we've just finished. 8.3.8 is um, middle school Spanish teacher. This is Justo Perez Esteves, and he is nominated to fill this new position. Um, Mr. Esteves received his bachelor's degree in Hispanic studies from USM, master's degree in Spanish, Spanish literature and culture from UNH. He's been both a middle school Spanish teacher at King Middle School in Portland and a high school Spanish, Spanish teacher in Brunswick High School. The administrative recommendation is to appoint Justo Perez Esteves as middle school Spanish teacher. Move approval. Second. All right. Questions, comments? All right, I'm going to take a stab at this. All in favor of approval of Justo Perez Estevez. Pretty not, good. Not quite as good as Dr. Entwistle <laughs> with his rollings, but uh, six. <laughs> Thank you. So moved. Welcome aboard. Hopefully at some point I'll be able to yes, we'll have that roll off my tongue. Yes. Um, it takes many years of practice. Mrs. Mm. Mass and Gill. Um, item 8.3.9. Uh, uh, another Wentworth school appointment. This is school technology in integrator. This is Joellen Clive, who we know very well. She's been uh, a fabulous um, team member at Wentworth. Mrs. Clive received her degree in elementary education from USM and her Master of Science degree in computer technology from Thomas College in, in Waterville. She's been teaching students in grades two through five for over 22 years in our Scarborough schools and we're delighted to recommend uh, the appointment of Joanne Clive as the Wentworth School Technology Integrator. Move approval. Second. Any questions, comments? All in favor of approval of Joellen Clive as the Technology Integrator. Six. So moved. Item 8.3.10, Wentworth School Math <laughs> Support Teacher. Teacher M M uh, Melissa Maddock is nominated to fill this one-year position. Mrs. Maddock received both her bachelor's and master's from the University of Southern Maine. She's been an elementary teacher at St. Bridget School in Portland since 2007. The administrative recommendation is to appoint Melissa Maddock as one-year teach, uh, math teacher at the Wentworth School. Move approval. Second. Questions, comments? Yes. Dr. Entrezzo, could you please elaborate as to why this is only a one-year position? Um, Mrs. Uh, Crosby can tell me. No, you can just tell me and I'll oh. say it. Because it is a one-year absence. It's, re it's a refill of or backfill of a leave of absence. Okay, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. All right, anything else about that one? No? Okay. I have a on the table. All in favor of approval as presented of Melissa Maddox. Six. So moved. The next item is 8.3.11, a high school literacy instructional coach. Uh, this is Adina Basler, nominated to fill this newly created position. It's basically um, uh, created from grant monies. Ms. Basler received her Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education from J St. Joseph's College. She's been teaching high school English for seven years, including a one-year position in Scarborough High School, which she had just completed. She also taught middle school English for eight years. The administrative recommendation is to appoint Adina Basler as the high school literacy instructional coach. Move approval. Second. All, any questions, comments? All in favor of approval as presented. Six, so moved. 
Eight point, uh, item 8.3.12 is a K2 literacy instructional coach, Anne Marie Henderson, nominated to fill this position. It was a position created by a combination of a retirement and uh, um, an, a, an addition to that uh, position. Um, Mrs. Henderson received her Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education from, from St. Joseph's College, her master's degree in education from the University of New England. Uh, she's been an elementary teacher in Jameson School in Old Orchard Beach since 2003, and she has been the K-3 literacy specialist in that school for three years. And the administrative recommendation is to appoint Anne Marie Henderson as the K-2 uh, literacy instructional coach. I thought that end of the table might like to make a nomination. Oh, well, I want to take it away. Move approval. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any questions, comments? Mm -hmm. All in favor of approval as presented. Anne Marie Henderson. Six. So moved. There will only be two more opportunities because item 8.3.13 is, three point, is a, a grade three to five literacy instructional coach. Karen Walker is nominated to fill this position created by a combination of a retirement and a reallocation. Basically, to explain those two positions, I think you probably already know, um, it was a retirement that created one full-time position. That position had been spread between K-2 literacy and 3-5 literacy. So we took half, put it in K-2, half put it in 3-5, and uh, the, the uh, budget afforded a, an, a, an additional position. So we now have a full-time K-2 literacy instructional coach and a full-time 3-5 um, uh, literacy coach, which is absolutely needed in order to um, move our uh, elementary literacy ahead in the way that we would like to. Mrs. Walker received her bachelor's degree in early childhood development from the University of Maine. She's been an elementary teacher for 24 years at Jameson Elementary School in Old Orchard Beach. The people at Jameson Elementary School are not going to be very happy with us, uh, but we do uh, uh, recommend the appointment of Karen Walker as the 3.5 literacy instructional coach. Approval. Second. Yes, Mr. Chiazzo, down uh, at the end. Have we filled then all of the new positions that we've created, or we, do we have a few left of new, the, uh, out of the new positions that we had uh, for the Wentworth School? I think we looked, at, we looked at art, we looked at music and things like that. How many of those are left open still to fill? Um, you know what I'm, is that not worded properly? Yeah, I think, I think maybe I'm not getting exactly what I'm sorry, at the, at, the, at the middle school, right, I'm sorry. We, we, in, our, in the budget, we had specifically listed some positions, art, music, Correct. that I see a few of these appointments filling those positions. How many are left that have not been filled yet? I don't know that there is a whole number of them. Is there any at all? There's so one um, music teacher at the middle school that needs to be filled. Okay. Did... I recall maybe a PE as well. Wasn't there something along those lines? There was. There were. Um, there was a halftime PE position that was converted to a full-time position, mm -hmm. and the uh, incumbent uh, moved into that position. And I believe that same happened, Mr. Chiazzo, mm -hmm. in um, right. in art. Okay. At at uh, at Mr. Creech's school. Okay. And thank you for school. that. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Anything else on that one? Okay. All in favor, then, of approval as presented on the 3-5 literacy instructional coach, Karen Walker. Six. So moved. The last item is 8.3.14, a middle school math teacher, Ashley McKenna, is nominated to fill this position. It was created by a resignation. Ms. McKenna received her bachelor's degree in business administration from RIT, which is Rochester Institute of Technology, and her master's degree in business from Southern New Hampshire University. She had uh, been a math teacher in various schools, including Sanford Adult Ed, Thornton Academy, Spalding High School. The administrative recommendation is to appoint Ashley McKenna as the middle school math teacher. Move approval. Second. Questions, comments? All in favor of approval of Ashley McKenna as the middle school math teacher. Six. So moved. And that con concludes uh, staff appointments. Okay. Mrs. Massengill, may I ask a question? Sure. Uh, have we calculated any savings uh, with these replacement teachers? I, I have not seen any. I haven't checked in with Kate about that. I mean, I, I'm supposing you know, if, if it was by a retirement, 
and there's somebody who's coming in fairly new to the game, I would guess that there'd be some kind of savings, but what exactly it calculates out to, I don't really know. So um, Kate's out of the office. I would suggest that there, next week. that there was not I mean, anything of significant savings because we have basically have lost positions, lost um, incumbents across the board in terms of of early in their career, middle in their career, and late in their career, and particularly the retirements. Um, and we have um, hired the most qualified people that we can, some just early in their career, some mid-career, and some late. So I don't think so, Jackie. I, I don't think there's okay. anything appreciably um, in terms yeah. of savings. I mean, a lot of these look like they had their master's degree, so obviously they'd be, you know, somewhere above entry level. Uh, Jackie, we can address that with the first quarter financial report as well. By then, we'll, we'll know exactly who's moved in and who's moved out, and Kate can give us a, yes. at I least a general understanding of where we're at. I didn't know if we might have a ballpark on it. I, I think it's probably tough to predict until all the positions are filled. Mm -hmm. um, once everything's set in place, like I said, first quarter financials, we should be able to report out where we're at. Yes, I'm pleased to see the variety, some people with very little experience on up to um, middle level, what I would call, you know, 10 to 15 years of experience. Um, I'm, I'm particularly pleased about, and I don't know Joelle and Clive, but I'm very pleased that we've been able to move someone within our district into a very significant position that's extremely hard to fulfill. So now here, to me, we have someone who has been in our school system for quite a while, has the knowledge in the curriculum and knowledge of the teachers, their strengths, and, and um, this is great to see that she is moving into that tech integrator position, which is just a, a very difficult position to fulfill, and she should be able to make that bridge between what she already knows within our district and this new position, so. And, and it's, a, and it's a very critical position to the new Wentworth School. Absolutely. So that we uh, basically take advantage of the technology that has been built in, in that school as, as it's being built into the new schools now um, to ensure that those tools are um, accessed and utilized uh, to, um, uh, to uh, promote uh, learning. And Donna, she also went to Scarborough High School. Bravo. <laughs> I was a teacher. That's good. That's perfect. Oh, well, of you didn't course. have to <laughs> share you didn't have to share that if you didn't want to, but you know, thank you for sharing. That's that's appreciated. All right. So we have eight point four. Uh, right now it's a motion to approve an adjustment to the Scarborough Athletics and Activities fee. Do I have any comments? Are you well, anybody want to make a motion to this? I think we can motion it and open it up for discussion, and then I can make a counter motion. That will work, right? I well, I thought we were. It's, it's just, I mean, it doesn't have to However be you want to that, do it. that formal. I think that the fact of the matter is that there's uh, there's still some details, and so I, it would be difficult to move and approve an adjustment if, in fact, um, you don't have the the details of that adjustment. So it's just it was put on the agenda as a placeholder for us um, to to have that, uh, and we don't have it. So in, in some ways, that explains sort of, why yeah. you would okay, why you would uh, table, table it. it. Good. So. Yeah. <laughs> we, need, we need the motion to table that item, anybody? I move we table item 8.4 uh, until such time where we have more information to act upon it. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? All right. Any questions, comments? All in favor of tabling 8.4? Six. So moved. All right. So now we have our committee reports, 9.0. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, see the hand I up. think it's important for the public to know that we have a... Uh, communication from our finance person, Kate Bolton, on the virtual schools. And I have been pushing, literally, for three months for the virtual schools to uh, stand up and, and honor their contract, and they are supposed to notify us when a Scarborough student enrolls. And it was Mrs. Bolton had to go and seek that information on our behalf. And I think people should know that this year's subsidy rate is only about 
of the charter school funding will come to us through GPA, and the rest will go to the charter school and the virtual school from taxpayer money. So uh, I've said all along we're not saving money having a virtual school or a charter school, and uh, it is, we do not have the exact calculations yet, but I just want people to think about this. You know, it's a free public education, but the town of Scarborough is going to have to cover the majority of the costs of those children to attend those schools, not the state of Maine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, so now we have committee reports. And I know Chris usually likes to have the last word, so I'll start down by Jackie. All right. Well, the, this, what do we do? Negotiations. Ongoing. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiations uh, team continues to meet through the summer with both the, the representatives from the bus drivers and the support staff. And it, it appears as though we are very close on both contracts. And I am happy to report that the negotiations have been uh, stimulating. And the give and take on both sides has been positive. And I would hope that both contracts will be finalized before the opening of school. Or shortly thereafter. Or shortly thereafter. OK. All right, um, what else? Anything to report from the state? No, I've, we've not had a meeting uh, from uh, the, the Maine School Boards Association. Uh, the Maine School Boards Association is trying to stimulate uh, forums for the, for the candidates for governor, but they don't seem to be cooperating. OK. Donna, teacher evaluation. So on teacher evaluation, um, there was um, some training and some work being done this summer for a few days from a group of people who moved forward to willingness to give up their summer days in order to come together and discuss what our plans are specifically to be sent to the state by the end of the summer. And then Mrs. Sizemore and a number of staff administrative people went to uh, some training out of state that uh, gave quite a bit more information on the model that we're following, which is Marzano. Do you want to speak to that, Julian? Yep. Um, we also have a training for all of our um, leadership uh, group for our teachers who have been involved with the uh, developing the model and our instructional coaches on August 11th. We have a consultant working with us uh, to help better understand the um, Domain 1 uh, learning map of the Marzano model. And then uh, it has a, com a computer component to it, which on Tuesday, the next day, will be uh, that piece for the Leadership Council to work when they go into the classroom for the evaluation. It's very exciting. We learned a lot. Um, it really energized all of us that um, we are doing some great things and we're in the right direction and we all have a lot, uh, a lot to learn and, um, and we'll, I think it will be very successful. I, the teachers are very much on board and enthusiastic about it also, so that has been great to work with the group. Great. Perfect. And just, you know, I really need to say that the work being done by Mrs. Sizemore and the school administrators Bob Hathon, uh, Kelly did a fantastic job. I mean, this is a lot of hours after the workday spent preparing this document to submit to the state and beginning to um, engage the teachers in what will become a, a, a really new document statewide for, for all the schools to use to do evaluations for all staff. I'll just point out we have multiple Kellys in administrative roles, so it's Kelly Crosby. Kelly Crosby. Over at Wentworth, so, so everybody knows. Um, Kelly Mullen Martin has other things that she's doing. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Equally as important. Mm -hmm. um, anything else with that? Mm -hmm. All right, so looking this way, I have policy. Yeah, policy has not met since I last week. Okay. 
business um, group? We have not met since June. Okay. C is partners. summer. I'm sorry. School business, business School partners. business partners. I always, the businesses is what I say. And Mr. Chiazzo, last but certainly never the least. Ha. Um, finance, as you know, we've, we've, I sat in on a meeting, uh, I think it was a few weeks ago now, uh, about the impact of the budget decision on some of our programming. It wasn't uh, positive, but it's a necessity based on the results of last year's, or excuse me, this coming year's budget. Um, where we have to do our year-end finance closeout with Kate um, between now and September, so we'll be scheduling another meeting, I think, through finance. And as always, I'll put that, that date out there. Everybody's welcome to attend. Um, but it should be just a review of our year-end to see where we landed, how we did. Um, I don't foresee any surprises. Um, one thing that I think is worth noting, there was an announcement yesterday through the governor's office um, that the state, uh, in spite of cutting our educational funding, landed a quite substantial surplus this year. Mm -hmm. So while we continue to face cuts and face increases in local taxes to cover the shortfall, the state has quite a nice little surplus going. <laughs> So I'm not exactly sure what we can do about that other than complain and hoot and holler, but uh, I think it's worth pointing out that um, the burden has certainly shifted to the local level uh, and somebody is benefiting and it's certainly not the town of Scarborough. So hopefully we can work on that collectively for the coming year. All right. Is that it from you? That's it for me. It's the summertime. I'm shocked. Oh. All right. So no more committee reports? Anything else? No? All right, then um, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session pursuant to one MRSA 4056A to discuss the superintendent evaluation for 2013-14. We will not be returning to public sessions. So this would conclude our meeting after someone so kindly makes that motion for me. So moved. Thank you. All in favor of adjourning to executive session mm. to discuss the evaluation of the superintendent. Six. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.